everybody, welcome back to Spruverse. Thanks for joining us. So this episode, I thought I'd do something a little different. I want to talk about some odd kits and fun stuff. As we sort of take our journey around the Spruverse universe, the scale model universe, we're going to be talking about and looking at all kinds of fun things. Um, and I will also be building some things as well. I promise you I will. But I wanted to just sort of get a lot of this stuff off of my chest because I'm just so uh, in love with, with, with every aspect of it and uh, of the hobby. And, and so I just wanted to share with you some of the, the things that are passionate to me that are out there and things that I found at perhaps at a, a trade show or that sort of thing. Hopefully, hopefully next year we can get back to a little bit of normalcy and we can get some kit shows going again because those are a lot of fun. If one ever comes to your area, they're a great place to find unusual kits out of, uh, uh, out of production kits, that sort of thing. And uh, I did just that uh, last year, last November, at a, a trade show here in California. And it was great fun. And you can find some really cool stuff there because a lot of these vendors don't just come from California. Obviously, they, they come from all over the country sometimes to sell their wares. And oftentimes, they've got stuff that you might not find on the shelves. In fact, I guarantee you, you will not find them on the shelves in uh, your local hobby shop. Except sometimes if you've got a shop that's been around for 30, 40 years, like we do here in California, we have a shop called Kitcraft, K-I-T-K-R-A-F-T. And uh, they buy, uh, they actually buy kits from uh, private collections. And sometimes you'll, you'll walk in there and you'll find some amazing stuff. If you found some amazing stuff, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you found and what you loved about it, uh, because uh, it, it's always cool to know uh, what, what people are finding and what are in their stashes. I wanted to start with this. This is the Dick Tracy Space Coupe. It's from Polar Lights. Um, so um, I've got to believe it's a repop of, of an old Aurora kit. Great fun. And uh, I picked this up, as you can see, for 20 bucks. <laughs> and Aztec Dummy, Lou Del Maso, of course, who is one of the most prolific plastic kit, or kit builders, I should say, out there, has built this kit. And he actually did some mods to it that were great fun. He added an interior uh, with, a, with, a, with an actual floor so, uh, and some lighting. Great fun. This is not a complicated kit. This does not have a lot of parts. Uh, it, I'm not going to open it because this is not an unveiling, really. It's just really to talk about it. Great fun. Look at these decals. Police. Magnetic space coupe. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that fun? I just love it. I just get such a kick out of it. And um, the instructions are really easy to follow. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the fun thing about uh, Polar Lights is, is they've done a lot of great repops and um, not, not, not just the, the Space Coupe from Aurora, but they've also done some other fun stuff too. Um, and uh, if you're into Lost in Space, they do the Jupiter 2, the Cyclops and the Robot. Also great fun to build. I recommend this kit for people who love fantasy they want to, they're just getting back into the hobby and they want to do something that is fun and relatively simple. It all fits together quite well. There's a little bit of puttying to do and seam cleanup, but for the most part, there is uh, not a, an awful lot of flash. Flash being the plastic residue on the outside of some of the parts that has to be cleaned up. But that, again, is part of the fun of this, of this hobby is cleaning things up and getting them ready for paint. One thing I'll talk about plastic kits, you know, there is a, uh, a thought process out there, and it's a good one, that when you get a kit like this and you open it, the first thing you do is you wash all of the parts in very warm, uh, soapy water like uh, palm olive or dove to get any release agent off of the parts. Now, 
because otherwise you might have a difficult time when you go to prime it and then paint it. Sometimes the paint won't, uh, won't adhere uh, properly. Uh, there are some ways around that if you, if you forget to, uh, to wash the kit. Uh, I have a confession to make. I don't wash a lot of my kits and I don't have issues. Uh, but I'm here to say that it's a good idea because I think that best practices are always good to, to, to talk about. What you choose to do is entirely up to you, but if you do run into problems, that's probably one of the issues is you've got uh, release residue on, on your kit. Now it happens, it, it, you know, once in a while you'll get one that uh, is bad. I've had it. Uh, and then you've got to wash them off, clean them off, and, and, and start again. And there is a way to strip these, these, these kits down again and, and start again. So don't worry about that. It's plastic. Don't be put off by a mistake that you make. Uh, as the famous uh, wet on wet artist used to say, Bob Ross, bless him, there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. And, and so I want everybody to, to, to uh, channel Bob Ross. You're in a Bob Ross when you're building kits. But this is a fun one. It's really simple. It's goofy, I know. Um, it, is, it is readily available. I picked it up for 20 bucks, um, but I know they're out there. So if you're looking for something like for a weekend build and you want to have some fun, Get the Dick Tracy Space Coop. I mean, come on, why not? It's a fun one, and it'll look goofy on the shelf, and it'll be a great, great item to, to talk about. This is an interesting one. I found this at a show as well. Now, um, I, these may be available on eBay and Amazon. In fact, I'm sure they are. This came all the way from Japan. It took quite a bit to get it, actually. It was kind of wacky. I have built the K-Spinner. Um, for a, a Randy Cooper resin kit. It is fantastic. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll put up some pictures of that. Uh, in fact, uh, there are some pictures of it on my uh, Spruverse uh, Instagram account. You can check it out there, Spruverse, and you'll see pictures of it. You can see pictures uh, of all of the kits I built there. Uh, and um, anyway, this is a spinner. But this is the cop car. Um, this is Spinner uh, Type 2 uh, in 124th scale. There's the, uh, the box art. Um, I'm getting a little bit of glare. Sorry about that. Box art. Box art. There's the box art. And uh, this one uh, is all in uh, Japanese, but the instructions are sort of pretty, pretty typical for kit construction, and uh, so it's easy to follow along. What you won't know is some of the other detail information they want to give you, but it's not rocket science when it comes to these kinds of kits, and, and this is actually, as I'm looking at it, um, Quite, quite well defined, although any other information you want about um, uh, color and that sort of a thing you won't get here, although uh, the choke warning is in English. And that, um, it's a relatively simple kit to put together. It's got some fun detail relatively if no flash whatsoever. It comes with some really fun decals to uh, put on the outside and a couple of colored parts. If you want to, this is one of those kits that it might be fun to put some lights in, especially for the, uh, the, the police lights. Um, and uh, gives it a little life. You know, lighting kits is doesn't have to be scary. It's not complicated. Um, you, you don't have to be uh, Nikolai Tesla to play with these. Um, and there are a couple of really great sites for lighting kits. Uh, Voodoo Effects, as I said, is one of them. And of course, Tenor Controls, which is the premier one for lighting kits as well. 
Uh, they've got plug and play. They're, they're happy to, to help you. There's a couple of other guys that are also terrific. Fedora Tron is another one and HDA Model Works. Jerry over there is a gentleman and he turns uh, his stuff around the next day. You place an order and he's on it. Great, just great service. He used to be a model builder as well. Sadly, he just doesn't have time to do it anymore. He's not, he doesn't do it anymore. I wish he would um, because I really enjoy his stuff. But this is the spinner from Fujimi. And uh, I think it is relatively available. So if you want something in the car space to play with, check it out. It's kind of fun. So that's that. The next one I wanted to show you is the Mashinen Krieger. This is from Hasegawa. Hasegawa. If you like fantasy and if you like sci-fi, wow, you gotta be all over this. If you like engineering and uh, sort of quirky looking designs, you've gotta be all over this. This is the Camel. And it is uh, a really, really fun, fun, fun build. Um, plastic kit, but more in the vein of a, sort of a Gundam, if you've ever done any of those, with the brilliant engineering, the interlocking parts, as you can see here, these, these wonderful ball joints made of rubber that take the pieces and bite them uh, brilliantly. Hoses for this thing that are all rubber. Um, an antenna made of wire, which is great fun. The body of this thing is really beautifully engineered. It's beautifully engineered. Um, with a front screen for the, uh, for the cockpit. Uh, more, more detail parts. Hosing some incredible great fun uh, on the decals so you, you you'll have a lot of a lot of fun with this and um, an instruction booklet that of course again is in it is in Japanese but it, it is very um, very straightforward to follow along with and um, one of the things that I would would recommend and we'll we'll always sort of talk about this as as we uh, as we go along when we build kits but when you go to build a section of, of something um, it's always fun to figure out whether or not you have to build this in subsections whether or not you just follow it from the beginning to the end sometimes uh, parts have to be painted right away sometimes you can wait so there's a lot of sort of planning and strategy that goes into this and that's a that that's a big part of uh, the fun that, that that I have with the hobby but something like this is really quirky now they're not cheap uh, this kind of kit you're talking about a hundred and thirty hundred and forty dollars um, sometimes uh, the Hasegawa's uh, there's smaller versions of them that you can get in the 60 to 70 range, but you're paying for quality, guys. This is engineering at its best, and if you take your time and you're patient and you um, absolutely dry fit every aspect of it, that's one of the things I'll always ask everybody to, to remember. Dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, so you don't get stuck gluing something you shouldn't have, have glued. But great kit, lots of fun. If you're into um, engineering and uh, really high-tech, futuristic sci-fi, this is the kit to get. It's the Mashinen Krieger from Hasegawa. Um, shifting gears, because I know we've talked about lighting, and. Um, <coughs> One of the, the things that, that I really appreciate is if you are a uh, moderate to skilled builder, you're most often going to have your own supply of LEDs and batteries and wire and you're going to put your own 9 or 12 volt system into uh, a kit of your choosing with the help of some, um, some boards and things that you can get from places, as I said, like Voodoo FX and Tenor Controls and Fedoratron and 
There, there, there's also Cult TV Man. I mean, there's, there's great, 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 great resources for these kinds of things. And I'll, I'll, I'll always put um, information about them in the link, and they'll, they'll ultimately be in the resource guide on my website. But, um, and recently, uh, Mobius Models, which is a great, uh, it's a really great little company out of Florida, I believe. Uh, anyway, they have just recently come out with a lighting kit for their 132 scale, their 132 scale flying sub. It has the headlights, the reactor board in the back, that flashing board, and it also has the rear engine lights. And it's a complete plug and play set. Now, there's a lot of guys online who have done the official unboxing and show you what you get, and they plug it and light it up. So, uh, plenty of places to, 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 to check it out and uh, they'll show you what it what it looks like. Uh, Ken Spriggs is one of them and um, he has a, uh, has done a great unboxing on this. Um, this is the Voyage uh, to the Bottom of the Sea Flying Sub Light Kit by Mobius. Uh, it is available, uh, I believe is available, for $119. You might be able to find it a little cheaper or a little more expensive, but if you are not skilled at putting your own lighting uh, together, but you wanted to try lighting a kit, this is plug and play. I highly recommend it. It's great fun. And the other one that's out there, uh, this, there's a few of them actually uh, that are out there, but uh, the other one that I thought was also very clever was the Katinga class lighting kit for the Polar Lights. Um, uh, the Klingon Cruiser in 1350 scale, 1350 scale. And uh, it also has some photo etch parts in it as well that, that are not available in the, in the original kit. Here it is. Um, again, it's, it's all plug and play. And because it is from the actual manufacturers of the kit, they made darn sure that all the plugs and clips and holes that you need are already in the ship. Now there may be a little bit of adjusting you have to do and, and uh, perhaps one or two holes might need to be drilled out a little bit, but for the most part it's all here and it's self-contained and the battery pack actually is um, in the ship itself uh, with a cable that goes to a switch that you can actually have in, in the display if you don't want to have it in the top of the ship and it's not difficult to uh, extend a, a, a switch and do that. Um, I may even show you how to do that in a later episode. It's great fun. So uh, again, these are just um, additional things that are on the market that are great fun to add another layer of just excitement to your kit building because beyond uh, photo etch, which I've not gotten into yet, I will, I promise you, lighting is one of those things that can really frustrate people, but it can also be one of those things that really brings a, brings a kit to life and it's great fun to, to, to do it. Start off slow with a couple of uh, smaller kits that don't require more than just one or two lights just to get yourself comfortable with it and go from there. If you want a basic tutorial on how to wire things, check out Boyd Crompton's Trekworks. Boyd, uh, probably a few years ago now, but it's on his YouTube channel, so it's an easy search, does an entire tutorial on basic lighting and what you need to do it. It's, it's very well done. Now, he's not the only one who does, but I think his tutorial is is pretty darn good, so check it out. So that's really just a little bit of one that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, you see some eclectic kits, a car kit, uh, a basic starter kit, a high-end Hasegawa kit, and um, a really sort of funky obscure car uh, from, um, from Blade Runner 2049, the, uh, uh, the, the spinner. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a little taste of some of the things in my stash and, and things that, 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 that I have. 
uh, or that I've gotten. Sometimes it's 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 funny because I'll I'll buy two or three of, of something because when I build uh, a kit and I decide to uh, do a you know do a uh, sort of an augmentation to it or or do some aftermarket stuff to it and I goof up. Uh, then I've got a, a, another part to pull from. Uh, it can be an expensive hub, uh, habit, but uh, at least if I make those mistakes and I figure out what I did wrong, and I, I can pass that along to you, so that'll be that'll be good too, uh, so that you don't make the same mistakes as, as I made. But hey, we're all novices. Uh, I am not a master model builder. I don't claim to be. I'm just a passionate enthusiast of the of the world and uh, trying to get better every time I sit down at this desk and I build something because it's great fun to do it. By the way, as a side note, just before I say goodbye, uh, I say build something at the end of my shows, or I have been. Uh, it's actually a shout out to uh, Wally Pasternak. He, was, uh, he had a channel called uh, Starfleet Model Academy. I, I, I think he's may, may still be on there somewhere, but boy, I miss him. Uh, just a really down-to-earth, decent human being who loved nothing more than to sit with you at a bench and take you through all of the steps of building kits. And I'm saying all of them. So if you do get a chance to, to check out Starfleet Model Academy, while he passed the next channel, uh, it's worth it. But uh, that's my shout out, and um, I don't know, I just feel like, uh, why not, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for checking me out. If you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. The, if you push the bell, you'll get notifications when I come out with a new episode. Until then, uh, please be safe, stay healthy, and build something, and I'll talk to you soon. Be well, guys. Take care.